Good evening, Yorktown. This is Supervisor Matt Slater coming to you from Town Hall. It is Sunday, May 3rd. This is, uh, I think this is our fourth question and answer session that we've held uh, regarding the coronavirus uh, to try to answer your questions. Uh, and I have uh, with me, of course, uh, we have Councilman Ed Lachterman, uh, as well as Sergio Esposito, President of the Yorktown Chamber of Commerce. Uh, for folks who want to ask questions, you can do it right on the town's Facebook page. We are live on the town Facebook page, and Councilman Lachterman is monitoring that. Uh, you can also call uh, the phone right next to me. It's 962-5722, extension 216, uh, and I'll be answering phone calls live. We do a few announcements that I want to uh, share. Uh, many we have already talked about, so I want to reiterate them. And they are as follows. Monday, May, May 4th, which is tomorrow, the Water Department will begin their water reading uh, for to try to catch up. They're going to do for April and May. It's two months. Uh, they're going to try to get done in one month. Uh, so folks living off of Gomer, including all the side roads east to the town line with Somers and west to Quinlan, all of Douglas and Curry, uh, Walden Woods, all of Jefferson Village, Hill Street, and Lee Boulevard. It's including High Meadow, Condos, JV Mall, and the JV Shopping Center. All of East Main Street and Jefferson Valley from the Taconic State Parkway, east of Somers. I'm just going to take a question if we already have one. Town Hall, Supervisor Slater. So we're having our question and answer. Uh, we've been having uh, every Sunday except for uh, Easter. We've had question and answer sessions uh, regarding the coronavirus. Do you have a question that I might be able to answer for you? Yep, no problem. Our town board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday. Planning board is on Monday, uh, so you can tune into those as well. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Again, this is a question and answer session. Uh, we've been having these just about every Sunday. The only Sunday we did not have a question and answer session was on Easter, and this is to provide answers to any questions that the folks at home might have. So as I was saying regarding the water meter reading uh, that's going to be occurring, all of East Main Street and Jefferson Valley from Taconic State Parkway east to Somers, uh, and to the Carmel Town Lines, all of the crossroads, Ponderosa, London Woods, uh, as well as uh, western end of Wildwood, Swed, and Edgewood. Again, this is all for your water meter readings. For the class of 2020 who attends the Yorktown High School, as a reminder, tomorrow, May 4th at 7 p.m., uh, Mr. DeGenero and his administrative team, as well as uh, Superintendent Ron Hatter will be hosting a virtual meeting with the class of 2020 and their families to discuss some important matters pertinent to uh, those students. Uh, there is a, a, a feedback platform that will be open until Monday morning, tomorrow morning. Uh, all this can be found on the Yorktown Central School District's website, uh, and you can go right to Dr. Hatter's page. He has provided uh, a number of uh, coronavirus updates. Uh, I believe he's up to 23 at this point, uh, and I know he emails them out as well. So as a reminder for the Yorktown uh, High School class of 2020, uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m., uh, a virtual meeting uh, for you all to participate with. On Friday, I had Dr. Stone, George Stone from the Lakeland School District join me, provided uh, some really great insight uh, for our parents and students about the future of schools. Uh, again, uh, public and private schools as well as public and private colleges uh, are no longer going to be offering classes for the rest of this academic year. That's what Governor Cuomo announced on Friday. Uh, they are not, those classes will not be offered, obviously, on site. There's still um, distant learning, uh, online learning that's continuing, uh, and we're, again, going to be providing more information as that comes to us. On Friday, I also signed an emergency order, uh, which provided a couple of uh, directives. Uh, we had it last weekend, a very high volume over at T-Town, uh, and it posed a serious public safety concern because people were, uh, they not only overcrowded the parking lots, but they were now parking on the streets, uh, and, and it caused a, a serious concern for the residents there. Also, from a public safety standpoint, we couldn't get a fire truck through uh, if an emergency uh, did occur, and so we did establish no parking zones uh, along Spring Valley Road from Route 134 to the Cortland Newcastle Town Line, Blinn Road from Spring Valley to Journey's End Road, T Town Road from Spring Valley to the Cortland Town Line, all of Journey's End Road and Grant's Lane. Uh, Councilman Lachterman and I, as well as Councilman Patel, Councilman Diana, Highway Superintendent Paganelli, 
uh, and our Parks and Rec director, Jim, Jim Moderano, uh, were all at T-Town yesterday morning uh, to, to monitor the situation. And I really want to thank Kevin Carter uh, and, uh, and his whole team for their great work. I was back again this afternoon, happy to report that there was no street parking. And of course, I want to thank the Yorktown Police Department uh, for having a strong presence over the weekend there. In addition to the no parking zones, uh, we discussed this and be right back to that. Town Hall, Supervisor Slater. Hello. Yes, it is. Do you have a question that I could answer? Yeah, this is a question and answer. We're providing some updates on uh, COVID-19. And if anybody has questions, they're able to call in and uh, we'll try to provide answers. You can also post it on the town's Facebook page. No, you can. Yeah. As people call in, uh, we'll be able to provide those questions uh, and, uh, and those answers as well. You can just hang out and enjoy. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Thanks. Town Hall, Supervisor Slater. So, Ed, the... Um, Correct. Yes, so we've been... Uh, so the question is about uh, masks. Uh, opening uh, up work, the country. question is about masks. Working with uh, Westchester County and Haines, they've donated masks to the town that we've been distributing uh, to our uh, immunocompromised seniors and, uh, and small businesses. And, uh, yep, and so we, we were at uh, Wynwood Oaks uh, on, on Saturday. Uh, we were at uh, Beaver Ridge on Friday. Uh, we've been delivering them to small businesses, and we're expanding that uh, t on Tuesday as well. And so uh, we'll be out there on Tuesday. Great. So for, uh, for folks, it's the Jefferson Village. It's a JOC parking lot right in front of Jefferson Village on Tuesday. The main, the main clubhouse right there. Yep, and that's for all of our seniors, uh, age 16 and above. Uh, we have uh, we have masks that we've been. No problem. Excellent. You're very welcome. What time will that we'll be? We'll see now? you then. Yep. Bye bye. Matt, so yep. Time so time so to provide some clarity on that, uh, again, we've been providing uh, masks to our immunocompromised seniors, uh, immunocompromised neighbors, our seniors, and uh, as well as to businesses for. I've gotten uh, a ton of highly positive feedback. Thank yep. you for doing that. Absolutely, and we continue to do that. So on Tuesday, we're going to be uh, we're going to be over at Jefferson Village at the JOC lot. Uh, the address there is 3480 Hill Boulevard. Uh, we are trying to organize this as best we can uh, to ensure uh, proper social distancing and reducing overcrowding. Uh, so anyone over the age of 60 um, uh, can can join can stop by. Uh, we will be doing this as follows. If you're we're trying to, again, be organized. Last name beginning with A through F, distribution will take place from 1 to 2. Last name beginning with J through K will be 2 to 3. Last name beginning with L through P will be 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And last name beginning with Q through Z will be 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and again, it's a drive-through setting, so you drive up, and we're going to have some of our uh, uh, elected officials and, and town employees who are going to be joining us. Uh, we will hand a mask to you. Uh, it's a reusable mask. It can be washed up to 15 times. Uh, and, uh, and again, that's going to be this Tuesday, May 5th. And if anyone has any questions, they can call my office, 914-962-5722, extension 200. This is for our seniors uh, in, uh, in Yorktown. And as I was saying, I just want to get back to the building department. Uh, as part of one of the, we had a Reboot Yorktown task force that we created uh, to try to set the table. Uh, and, and I want to thank Sergio for your leadership, as well as Bob Giordano from the Yorktown Small Business Association. We've got a great team that we put together. Um, and one of the things that we discussed was expanding outdoor dining. Uh, and so in response to that, uh, we have uh, expedited that process. So you no longer need to go get an approval from the planning board. You can get it straight from the building department. I'll be doing a video with our building inspector, John Landy, tomorrow, explaining what that process will be. Uh, but it's an expedited process, as well as uh, we will not be collecting a fee for the outdoor seating permit. Uh, and again, that's to 
help our small businesses, our restaurants, our eateries get back on their feet, as well as make the public more comfortable returning to some of our great restaurants and, and eateries here locally. Uh, and so we, the town board, uh, agreed that an executive order to put this in place immediately uh, made a lot of sense, and we are also uh, going to be passing it legislatively, and we are in the middle of that process as we speak. And so that was on Friday. Other news that we heard from Governor Cuomo recently, uh, and this is regards to our school board elections and budget votes, uh, they will be conducted by mail, uh, and they will be taking place until June 9th. Again, that's June 9th. So you'll be, everyone will be receiving something in the mail, a ballot in the mail. Um, and uh, again, this is for school, school budgets and school board elections. Uh, and uh, statewide, it will be in place until June 9th, 2020. Uh, again, the school board elections and budget votes will all be conducted by mail, and all qualified voters will be sent an absentee ballot with return postage paid. Uh, not that it applies to Yorktown, but the executive, also, uh, executive order also delayed local, special district, and village elections until September 15th, but we don't have any of those in the town of Yorktown. But for the school budgets and the school board elections, uh, every, every qualified voter will be receiving an absentee ballot, and you have until June 9th to complete them. And again, if you want to ask a question, you can post it right on the town's Facebook page. And Councilman Lachterman, I don't know if you've, got three. we've got three questions. What do you have? First question, uh, thank you again for all you're doing. Uh, with the same precautions you are taking at T-Town, is there a plan for monitoring the bike path? Uh, the lot on Route 118 is overflowing, and pedestrian and bike riders mm -hmm. are uh, making for dangerous driving through yeah. the area. Yeah, that's been raised. Um, just so everyone understands, North County Trailway is a county entity. The town does not um, oversee it. But uh, we did have an issue to, to that individual's point about parking along Route 118. Uh, we had a, a high volume of uh, cars parked along the curve of 118 to get down to the trestle, uh, which is one of the most beautiful spots in Yorktown. Um, and, and I encourage everyone to uh, safely and socially responsibly uh, check it out. However, uh, parking along Route 118 does pose a significant concern, and so uh, we will be, or I will be, raising this with County Executive Latimer uh, when I talk to him tomorrow, uh, as well as his staff, so we can see if we can address it. Very good. Uh, are the masks only for Yorktown residents or anyone that is senior or is prone to it, like people who have asthma? Uh, right now, we're trying to keep in the Yorktown residents with uh, who are either seniors or immunocompromised. Uh, but if anyone has a specific request, uh, they can reach out to my office. Uh, you can either email me at mslater at yorktownny.org, or you can call 914-962-5722, extension 200. Uh, is there any reason why the recycling truck comes at 5.30 a.m. now? Yeah, so the recycling has been an issue. Uh, for, for a couple of reasons, and I want to thank our R&R our, our &R director for tackling this. Um, we have gotten several complaints. The, the contract states that they're not supposed to be out before 6. Uh, they've actually been sending three recycling trucks rather than two, so they're getting through their routes quicker. Uh, and so we've, we've continued to uh, request that the 6 a.m., uh, time slot be adhered to because that's dictated within the contract uh, and we are continuing to work with AAA to make sure that that's the case uh, but I would just advise folks if you can um, and I forget to do it myself and I go running out of my house at uh, in an ungodly hour in, in the morning but if you can put your recycling out beforehand uh, that would be very appreciative um, and beneficial also as a reminder um, uh, make sure you're sorting it correctly that's a very important thing because right now uh, with the high volume of recycling that uh, is being collected because everyone's home, um, our, our, uh, our contractor is being uh, much more stringent on enforcing the, um, the sorting requirements. And so people have, I've received complaints about that as well because sometimes, you know, hey, I, I didn't sort it la you know, once before and they still took it. Uh, the difference is now they're dealing with so, so much more volume and so they're, uh, they're really adhering to that, uh, that sorting requirement. Uh, we, did a, we did for Earth Day, um, 
Uh, Kim Anglis Gage, our R&R &R director, and I did a, did a great instructional video, which is on our Facebook page. We'll put it on our website as well. You can also visit the website, and it has the card uh, that the R&R &R, uh, department sends out instructing you on what should and shouldn't be recycled and how to recycle them. Town Hall, Supervisor Slater. Building inspectors? Great, great question. I'll answer it right now. Thank you. Uh, the question is, when are building inspectors going to be allowed back out? Actually, our building inspectors are doing virtual inspections uh, because we are trying our best to get everyone the permitting that they need. Um, and so I would contact the building department if you have a permit that's pending. Um, and this started last week. And so they've had tremendous success with it. Uh, and they are so they basically what they're doing is they're having people go around with their iPhones. They're recording um, the tour or the inspection and they're saying that they're seeing overwhelming success with it. Uh, and so if anyone does have a permit that's uh, in the building department that requires an inspection, contact the building department. Uh, they are doing virtual inspections. I think we're up to three people now every day doing virtual inspections to, to get through as much of the paperwork as we can. You do know John had a death in the family over the weekend? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. I, I, I was aware it was going to happen, but yeah. yeah. Well, our, our condolences to our building inspector, John Landy, and his entire family. Uh, uh, our building inspector, John Landy's father-in-law, uh, passed away from uh, COVID-19 over the weekend. Uh, I understood that uh, it, was, it was expected, and our hearts and prayers uh, go to the entire Landy family during this very difficult time. Other questions you might have on Facebook? Yep. Um, well, there actually is a, a thank you from a resident, uh, and this came across as a personal message, but I'll share it. A thank you to... Uh, you, me, and the entire uh, town board for the uh, mask that was left on our door at Beaver Ridge. Oh, yep. We did, like I said, we delivered 300 of the, uh, the Haynes masks to Beaver Ridge on Friday. Uh, great to see that they were distributed. Um, and we, we delivered, I think, about 120 uh, yesterday up to Winwood Oaks and a, and a very uh, happy 100th birthday. To Dee Dee. To Dee Dee. Yeah, yep. we, had, we celebrated a 100th birthday. Uh, and uh, she, she was just awesome. She, yes. had, she had a great smile, great personality, great sense of humor, and, and Dee Dee, we hope you enjoyed your special, special day. Again, happy birthday. Yes. Um, happy birthday. Again, if you want to ask questions, you can post it on our Facebook page, and Councilman Lachterman will uh, read them out. Uh, if uh, not, you can call 914-962-5722, extension 216. We are fielding questions that uh, pertain to COVID-19, the New York on pause uh, order from Governor Cuomo, uh, as well as any, and we have Sergio here, our, our president, as well as any questions you might have regarding the business community or your, or your uh, PPP. Um, I know you had some information that you wanted to share about the forgiveness application. That's correct. You want so, to share some? Sure, sure. Uh, but, uh, first, I want, to, uh, I want to thank you and the town board for expeditiously, ex expeditiously, <laughs> Moving on um, on the outdoor dining, I mean, you guys are really, uh, you really hit the ground running with that. And I think the restaurants are uh, going to be, um, you know, very appreciative. And I think it will draw people out and make them a little more comfortable if they're not willing to or comfortable with going inside. So I really want to thank you guys. That, that is a home run for the business community. I know it's not a one-size-fits-all but, um, you know, it will help a lot of, uh, of restaurants. So just there was a question relating specifically to this. When would restaurants be able to offer outdoor dining? So, you know, the whole process here is to get them ready for when the governor says it's okay. Right. And, they're just and, setting the table. Yep. So we're, we're, we're setting the table so they could hit the ground running again. Right. Uh, not have to then start the process up once they get an okay. Right. So. Uh, and again, to that point. The building department, by signing the executive order, can begin processing those applications. Yes. And something that you and I discussed was also the SLA, which is a whole other uh, state liquor authority uh, to allow the service of beer, wine, alcohol uh, in those outdoor uh, seating areas, which is a whole other conversation. But Correct. at least from local government standpoint, we're going to be able to process those applications as quickly as we can. Uh, and again, at no, with no permit fee associated with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, uh, you know, kudos to you guys. The building department's on board, uh, the planning, everybody's just on board with it, and, and you guys are really moving quickly with it. And, yeah, we're going to have to wait for uh, the governor to uh, lift the ban. Right. But it is a great way 
uh, because, you know, my vision of, of when we start opening up is that uh, the capacity is going to be minimized, right? If uh, you might be at 50% capacity, who knows what the number is going to be. But hypothetically, let's say it's at 50% capacity, um, you know, you'll be able to, as a restaurant, as a business in Yorktown, increase your capacity with this outdoor uh, initiative. So I Down very much appreciate later. it. Yep, and as a, as a restaurant guy from my past. Hey, Mike, how are you? I really, you know what I know, just like you said, it's hard enough to make it work with 100% occupancy. If it's 50%. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we, we need to do, you know, besides being Yorktown strong and going out to our local businesses, our local restaurants, and, and saying, hey, let me stay within, you know, the four, four walls of Yorktown, so to speak, uh, we need to, we really need to, as a so the, town, so make it uh, easy enough for them to I'm just waiting for get time. some added seats. Sorry, go on, Matt. No, no problem. So Mike's question is about uh, uh, lawn care and uh, maintenance uh, uh, and, and leaf blowers uh, was another question he raised. Uh, I, we have not received any direction from the state on leaf blowers. Some municipalities have independently uh, put restrictions on leaf blowers. Uh, especially during these times. Uh, several villages have. I don't believe any town municipalities have, at least not to my knowledge. Um, as for maintenance, uh, lawn maintenance has been, we went back and forth over this quite a bit, and lawn maintenance has been declared an essential service allowed under uh, the state's uh, ESD uh, guidelines, uh, and you can find that right on our, on our website there. Um, and as for the tree removal, um, the tree removal, I think, would be dictated um, as an at-need basis, and I'd have to double-check on the, on the guidance about uh, whether or not a tree removal uh, would, be, would be allowed. I mean, a lot of that isn't, isn't up to me. A lot of that's all uh, predicated on the, on the orders and the guidance from the governor's office. I mean, uh, and that's a great point that I wanted to talk about tonight is just making sure people understand that a lot of this is being dictated by uh, county and, and state government uh, as well as federal government. So local government here, we're more focused on implementation than we are um, setting, setting specific policy because, and, and the governor actually passed an order stating we couldn't pass any, uh, any more restrictive orders uh, unless it was approved by the Department of Health. So um, we're, we're kind of in a box in, in that sense and, and focus on implementation of his orders at this point in time. But I'll be on the county call tomorrow with other uh, supervisors uh, and elected officials uh, with the uh, county executive ladder. And I'll, I'll raise the leaf blower question and I'll also have our legal team uh, do some digging on that. You got it, Mike. No problem. Stay well, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so um, going back to that, um, you know, we, we also did start uh, the conversation at the last town, uh, town, town board meeting uh, regarding uh, extending the same courtesy to some businesses um, other than restaurants that, that could do some outdoor sales or something like that. Uh, which, we're, that which we're going to explore at Tuesday's town board meeting is, expand, is expansion of use in C1 and C2 zones. Uh, we're we're going to be having that conversation at uh, at our next town board meeting this Tuesday. It begins at 7:30, um, and so we're trying to. I think we recognize that that's an important aspect. Absolutely. I think we wanted to get the restaurants taken care of first, and and, and give them the helping hand. Job. And now we can focus on uh, you know the next steps in that in that conversation with, with extended use. Uh, whether it's you know we can go again. It's it's not a one size fits all, right? So retail is very different. Is, right? Retail is very different than a nail salon, you know. Uh, what are we going to be able to allow them to do outdoors versus in, in a retail setting, which is just, and a lot of times, just putting their product out, right? Correct. Um, and, and, you know, we have wishes right down, right down the street here. That's an example that we continue to use, you know, allowing those types of retail stores to put their product out versus a service-oriented service establishment, such as a barber or nail salon or... Uh, massage studio. <laughs> massage studios, yes. Right. Councilman Lachterman, owner of a massage studio. Uh, and so what are, you, what are we going to be able to, under the law, allow them to do outside? I, I, so we, I think we have to take it step by step, and that's what our intention is. And, and with the support of the business community, I think we can, uh, we can provide some very creative solutions to these questions. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's a tough time. It's a tough question. But, you know, again, you guys, um, you guys are willing to listen. You're willing to move on it. 
you flush it out, you know, you, you critically analyze it. I think you guys, you guys are on point with it. Yeah. By the way, one thing just popped in my head, Mike, if you're listening from Mohegan Lake, you just called about leaf blows and tree removals. As a reminder, there is a, sa a noise ordinance uh, that the town is in the town code. Weekdays, uh, not before seven. Weekends, not before eight. Uh, so uh, just, again, my apologies for the late response, and it just popped into my head. Uh, but if that uh, if that's being violated um, that time frame, then I would encourage uh, folks to either call the building department uh, and speak with our code enforcer, or you can call the non-emergency line at the police department, which is 914-962-4141. So, with the, with regard to the PPP, which was the original question, I kind of like uh, derailed us a little, but I thought the conversation was more than uh, worthy. But with regard to the PPP. Check your, uh, your bank portals. Um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. The money is actually flowing to a lot of businesses in Yorktown. I've, I know a, 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 an incredible amount of people that have received funding. Um, so, you know, check in your business portal. Check your email. Check your spam. You know, they are reaching out to you. And the money is getting deposited. Uh, the next stage, which we, will be, which we will be discussing in more detail as we get information, is applying for the forgiveness portion of it, right? The PPP loan isn't automatically forgiven, so don't assume if you get the money that, hey, you know, that's it. You know, there's nothing else for you to do. There are going to be next steps. They haven't come out yet. There is going to be an application for that. Um, that hasn't come out yet. There was some uh, questions about whether or not uh, it was going to be, the loan itself was going to be a taxable loan uh, to the businesses. And the clarification on that, from what I understand today, is that um, it's, it's not going to be taxable to the businesses, but the bills that you pay with that loan won't be write-offs for your business. Like, so you can't get the loan, get the, get the free money, and then pay a bill, and then to, at the end of the year, write it off on your taxes. That would be kind of like double dipping. So that's what I understand today. But again, it's just like the rollout. It's all kind of... Um, coming out as we speak now. So I will have more information in conjunction with the town, of course, um, for everyone uh, to get us guided down into the right direction and get the loans, as many loans as we can, forgiven for our, our business community. So we appreciate that, that. that's where we stand. Yeah, and thank you for your, for your guidance on that. I know there's always a lot of questions on this. I know you're also a small business owner. Absolutely. And still trying to find guidance on, uh, yep. on the PPP. And, you know, it's... Look, the, the, way, the way I looked at it when I applied was that I'm, so I'm going to apply for it as a loan, a low-interest loan that I'm going to be paying back. And if at the end of the time some is forgiven, the, the stimulus checks, that is, the, you know, that, 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 that's a great thing. Uh, but I'm not counting on it being yes, forgiven. Yep, we'll go over I'd that like right now. to, no problem. you know, you. I, I need it to have to have some equity at the end of the, the end of the rainbow, so to speak, so I'm able to keep my my doors open. You know, there, there are bills that are still accumulating, that are That's still right. happening. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's really a, the best way to look at it is if you need a low interest loan, this is the way to go. And don't look to, to assume it's gonna be uh, yeah. a forgiven loan. At the very least, it's a 1% loan for the next two years. Yep. And then after two years, it becomes, I believe it's 4%. It goes to 4% for the additional eight years. It's a 10 year loan. Right. Uh, but you know, that doesn't mean um, the entire loan, if you're not forgiven, that the <clears throat> entire loan is due. You might, be, get, you might get 20% or 50% or 80% of the loan forgiven, right. and then you owe the 20% at 1% interest. Right. I know I'm throwing a lot of percentages yeah. and numbers out there, but yeah. it gets a little, but right. that's how that works. Question for you from the last caller. Can you uh, expand on the stimulus checks for sure. individuals? And I know this is something that you and I were talking about before we started. Sure. Uh, I know so, it was a point that you wanted to discuss. Yeah. Um, so 5 million checks are going out a week. Um, you know, what, what, what I want people to understand is and that... Again, this is for individuals. Yes. This isn't, we're not talking PPP, so that's Correct. separate and aside. So we're talking individual stimulus checks as taxpayers. Correct. Yeah, 5 million checks are going out a week. Um, that's as fast as they could print them. Um, and so they did... I do have a, a, a rough schedule. I'll give you a couple... I mean, there's, there's 10 or 15 lines here. I'm not going to read them all. But it is going out by uh, the people that need it the most, the people with the lowest income first. Um, and, and then to the, the people with the highest income last. 
um, on my chart. Um, anybody that's in the in the highest of the highest of the income that that qualifies, those checks are going out September 11th. Now this is a rough estimate, so don't hold me to it. Um, let's say you're making between 50 and 60 thousand May 29th, right? Let's say you make. That's when they mail them. That's when they mail them, right? Because these are the paper checks, right? Just like unemployment, folks. I mean, everybody has to understand that no one ever thought, and no system would would ever be set up to handle the in, the incredible amount of volume right. that's actually that, that hit. I'm a computer guy, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a systems analyst, and there's absolutely no way you could have had the, the forethought of, you know, tens and of millions of people all at once. So the systems are really, really vastly overwhelmed. Yep. Um, but uh, again, and I'll give you one more. Let's say you're making between 130 and 140 uh, thousand you, uh, you would, your check would be mailed on July 24th. And there's a whole list that, goes, uh, that, that we could post. Great. But that's where the stimulus checks are. They are coming. Um, can you, uh, can you share the forward. schedule? Because I want to put it on the COVID-19 platform on our website. Sure. If you can send that to me. Absolutely. Supervisor Slater, how can I help you? Yep, yep, we're in the middle of it right now. Do you have a question that I can answer for you? It's, so we've been doing these Q&As for uh, COVID-19 uh, in case you have any questions that we might be able to provide some insight on. Is that the, when you say tested, is that antibody or COVID-19 test? Okay. You know, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, we are seeing uh, a whole host. I mean, again, I'm not a medical expert, so uh, hard for me to hard. You know, I don't want to I don't want this to be, you know, gospel, but uh, we are seeing a range of symptoms. Uh, we've seen we've seen things from uh, uh, headaches and and yeah, I mean, so it all it, it's, it's very exactly it's 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 a very complicated virus. Um, but the, the key is just being in touch with your health care provider. Uh, there's COVID-19 tests that are that are provided uh, here locally at our urgent care centers, at our, at our health care uh, centers. Um, they provide uh, COVID-19 testing down at Westchester Medical Center, as well as Phelps Memorial Hospital. Uh, I know, I know um, for urgent care, my understanding is for the antibody testing, um, that's being completely covered by insurances. I'm not sure about the COVID-19 testing. Yes, you can get an antibody test, correct. Mm hmm Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not the mask police. I get it. Well, that's not allowed. <laughs> uh, you could have called. You could have. You could have called the local police, and they would have. They would have uh, patched you into the correct. Uh, agency yeah that's that yeah so as yeah and, I, and I'm happy to, 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 to remind people about this but uh, you know for uh, for people at home um, uh, FDR Park remains open um, but again it's very clear social gatherings of any kind are not permitted under Governor Cuomo's order uh, and so when when we have accounts such as uh, uh, this I'm sorry what was your name again Paula, thank you. As we have accounts such as Paula of people in, uh, in, our, in our park uh, having birthday parties, uh, that is not permissible under the executive order. If people do see that, we encourage them to call the police. Again, their non-emergency line, which is 914-962-4141.
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. If, if Yep. Yeah. It is really is it, there's parallel tracks there. Well, I think it's being I can't speak to that specifically because that's coming from the state state level, not not from our level. Um, but again, so I think there's there's two tracks that they're encouraging people. Number one is to go to your, your primary health care physician, uh, and then they either have the COVID-19 test that they can perform, uh, or they can they can send them to a, t a testing site. But to your point, if they don't do that, you can call the state hotline, which is 888-364-3065, and then they can get you uh, in the queue for either for one of the testing sites. And there's there's more that are opening. Uh, across the region. So, yep. Yeah, we're getting more testing, so it's making it a much more efficient uh, process and, and much easier. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you so much, Paula. Appreciate it. You have a good night. Bye bye. <clears throat> yeah, that was great. You know, great points again. And Paula has been uh, tested. She's being retested and uh, because she continues to show symptoms and she had a. Uh, an acquaintance who you, uh, also was, was symptomatic, went to their health care provider, um, and, but only got through when, they, when she called the hotline to get tested. And so that hotline remains, just for folks at home who understand, the hotline remains in place, 888-364-3065. That's a state, the state's hotline to schedule a COVID-19 test, which is different than the antibody test. Town Hall, this is Supervisor Slater. Okay. Yes, the stimulus checks. It's an income level. Yes. No, uh, no. There, there's a, there is an income cutoff uh, for people to receive a check, um, uh, but it's it's phased in based on your income level when you're going to receive that check. So if you're on. The higher end of the spectrum for your income, you're going to receive that check much later versus if you're on the lower end of the uh, income spectrum, you're going to receive it. Uh, they're going to mail it out in the next couple of weeks. Um, well, they've right. been going out, right? What is the cutoff? $500,000? 198000 yeah. $198,000. Uh, that, that's is... joint. If you're filing jointly uh, with you and, and, you know, well, if you're filing jointly, let's just If you're filing like jointly is $198,000 is the cutoff. I don't know why. I was thinking of Star. Star is five hundred thousand. Yes. So then is it ninety nine thousand for single? Ninety nine thousand. You're for welcome. Single, yeah. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Well, we're gonna get some revenue because that gentleman's gonna send his check to the town. So that's exciting. Yeah. Is that what he said? <laughs> yes. You should check the shop local, folks. Please. Yeah. Uh, that, Please. That's too. That's too. Uh, just a couple Questions on Facebook? Yeah, we have a few that have been built up. Uh, sure. What is the best and fastest way to renew a handicap permit? Call the town clerk's office. Um, uh, comment back from the addressing of uh, uh, the parking situation. On 118? On one, well, well, not only 118, but uh, uh, they want to know if Turkey Mountain uh, I was there today. is going to be addressed. Turkey Mountain needs to be addressed. I was on the. I was there today, um, and and I was there when the parking was built up across the street on the other side of 118. And I was on the phone with our park superintendent, and we plan on obviously we're going to have to address this. Uh, and and it's uh, it's one of those things where we were hoping to rely on on socially responsible decisions made by the public. We've been very clear that if you're going to one of our trails, and we have, honestly, we have some of the best trails in the Hudson Valley, if not the state. We've got 40 miles of nature trails, 
for everyone to enjoy. Um, and we encourage you to enjoy them. Uh, we do. But you have to be socially responsible. What does that mean? That means if you're driving over to Turkey Mountain and you, turn, you go to turn in and you're turning into gridlock traffic, which is what I witnessed today because there are so many cars parked on one side, people trying to leave. It's a nightmare. Don't make the turn. Just don't make the turn. That's not socially responsible because that means that the trail is completely overused. The Turkey Mountain trails will be completely overused and, and we encourage you to go find another place to go for a hike. If you're going into Turkey Mountain, go to Hilltop Hanover. It's five minutes down the road. Honestly, it's, it's a great spot for people to enjoy uh, and I bring my kids there often. Um, also, socially responsibly means wearing a mask and a facial cloth. Uh, covering your face if you're going to be outside and you can't maintain social distancing. And I know that people think that if you're wearing a mask, you're invincible. You're not. You still have to make very smart decisions uh, because it really does impact not just yourself, your friends, your loved ones, but complete strangers. And so when you're outdoors like we were, like we were today, I was at Turkey Mountain. I was there at 2.30. There was a complete traffic jam as people were trying to pull in and the traffic literally went across 118. You, got, you, got to, you really got to be socially responsible and, and, and frankly use a bit of common sense. And, and if you've been to that trail before, you know how far down that drive goes until you're at the trailhead. I mean, you're at least a quarter mile, if not more, yeah. until you're at the trailhead. So if you find yourself in that situation, there are plenty of other places to go to enjoy the outdoors and to enjoy them safely, not just for you and your family, but for all the other people who are already there. That's what it means to make socially responsible decisions. There's a lot of great places. YorktownTrailTown.com. You can access it from your phone. They tell you where all the trailheads are. They tell you directions on how to drive to them. I can tell you that the trail over on Buckhorn Street has remained uh, very quiet. I was in Sylvan Glen yesterday. Uh, the parking lot when I returned was full, um, but that is... That is uh, Again, when I, when I pulled in, it was not, but when I got, when I got out, it was full. Uh, but that's also a big enough place where we really didn't encounter too many people. And those who we encountered, everyone made sure there were six feet, at least six feet. People were, you know, they're off the trail trying to stay away from people, but they all had uh, a mask on, face uh, or a cloth. Again, being socially responsible. This is not the time, and we said this last week, it's focus. Yep. Germany, Absolutely. folks, if you haven't, if you haven't listened or, or watched the news, Germany went from uh, the same level of infection that we're at, which is, I believe the last I heard was 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Uh, uh, take. Excuse me? Give or take. Yeah. Give or take, 0.7. But now they're over 1.2 again, which was, again, that's, that's the level of pandemic. Uh, and so you, you really, it, it, we're not out of the woods. We're really not. And that's what we're guarding against more than anything right now. And it's this balance that we have to continue uh, to try to achieve is a second spike. And, and that's something that's very real. It's happened in other places across the world. It's, helping, it's happened in, in Thailand. It's helped, it happened in South Korea. It's happened in China. It's now happening in Germany. Um, that, that's a real thing. It's not make-believe, but it really comes down to making the right choices uh, when you decide to go out in public. And, and ironically, uh, like my daughter was living in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, for two years, and we went out to visit her. Uh, very, very similar to like the hiking around Yorktown. Yeah. Lakes, uh, mountains, well, hills, not really true mountains, going to the Slosses. And I, I haven't done as much hiking in my life probably ever yeah. <laughs> as, yeah, as we beautiful. did in, in Germany. And, and, but it's, you know, people think being outside is... Just because you know, you're outside doesn't mean you have to follow the rules. Period, right. end of conversation. Whether you're at Sparkle Lake, and I, and I drove past Sparkle Lake a number of times today because I live around the corner. If you're at Sparkle Lake and you're still, you can't maintain social distancing, you have to, again, wear a mask or, or some kind of facial covering. Uh, if, you're, if, you're there, if you're there fishing, that you were me. If you're there fishing, uh, because that's where a lot of the families congregate on that path where the barbecue is and the picnic area, you're not going to maintain social distancing. Make sure you're bringing a mask with you. Make sure you have it in your back pocket. Um, you know, we saw it. We saw it all today. FDR Park is the same deal. Uh, again, FDR Park remains open. It's a state park, not a town park, state park. But if you do uh, feel that people are not adhering to the parameters, again, you can call the non-emergency line for the Yorktown PD, and they will properly address your concerns. But if you're going to go over to FDR Park, 
socially responsible, make those right choices, not just for you, but for the people you don't even know who are there, because it could be life or death. So I'll, I'll actually address this one. There was uh, another, ex another uh, question about the recycling, and I think the fact that, that not even the 5.30 in the morning, they shifted. Uh, they used to be at 11 a.m., now they come at 5.30. There was a question that the wind and the raccoons love to make a mess. Uh, one of the things that I did when they changed ours to early morning, and I knew I had to get it out there or, you know, God forbid, send my wife out in the morning because it's hard to get me out of bed in the, in the a.m., um, you could always take a piece of uh, plastic or cloth, lay it over the top or, or a piece of cardboard, put a brick on top. That'll, that'll usually prevent uh, raccoons and or the garbage from blowing out because uh, there's really not a lot of, usually not a lot of food in the recycle. In the recycling, yeah. You have to make sure that you're, you know, also yeah. make sure you're cleaning out properly. Right. Uh, there's a question. So I saw a question about pools pop up. Were you there I yet? didn't get there yet, okay. no. Uh, how many cases are there in York Town as of now? Is the rate of infection increasing? So or the decreasing? last the last number we had was uh, on Friday. That number was 454. We've seen a pretty um, uh, a real plateau in the increase number of uh, confirmed cases. Town Hall Supervisor Slater. Hey, how are you, Supervisor Gilbert? How you been? I absolutely will. Appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, I appreciate that, Lonnie. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All the best to you and your family. Stay well, okay? Thanks. Bye-bye. That was, uh, that was uh, Lonnie Gilbert, former Yorktown supervisor, former Yorktown justice, just uh, sending his well wishes to everybody. Uh, appreciate everyone's efforts. Uh, and uh, he's doing well. His family's doing well. Good. So it's great to hear from him. We appreciate that. Very good. All right. uh, any thoughts on annual pool passes, assuming sure. the pool's open this season? So we, the pool conversation and the camp conversation, I think, are the next two big things that we're trying to figure out. Um, there are – it's a very complicated matter, to be, to be completely frank. We're working very closely with the, uh, the county's uh, Department of Health, as well as obviously our Parks and Rec uh, superintendent department. Um, uh, we have uh, spoken as well with uh, – or I have spoken as well with – uh, the Rec Commission uh, Chair, Al Evitable. Um, and it's a very complicated manner, and there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, uh, we, number one is public safety, public health and safety. So how are we going to uh, have either camps or, or open the pools and ensure that uh, social distancing is going to be adhered to? Also, we don't even know, quite frankly, if uh, the governor is going to allow pools to be open. Right now, as part of his order, the public pools are closed. So we may not even have a choice. Uh, we are trying to figure out if we're given a choice what the best decision for the town is. Um, again, both for camps and pools. Um, pools in particular, we're running into more stumbling blocks. Something that was raised just uh, Friday from our parks department was the um, uh, lifeguard, lifeguard accreditation. Um, we don't, we're short on lifeguards because they're not offering the courses. This is, you know, and, and, and understand, and I hope the folks at home understand, and I was speaking with Councilwoman Roker about this earlier today, preparation for pools and camps don't start in June. Preparations for schools and camps really start in April. So we're already behind the eight ball uh, in a lot of ways. Additionally, and we're going we're gonna to provide some more detail on this, uh, I hope, um, this week, you know, there is a real financial impact that the town is going to be dealing with. Um, we are seeing a significant reduction in revenue. Uh, our pools and camps are not money makers. Um, we break even. And so if we're going to... On a good year. On a good year. So if we're going to spend, you know, nearly, I think, combined, it's in, in about $750,000... Uh, it, we have to make that, we have to decide financially if we're even able to spend that money, number one. 
And number two, uh, what's the return going to be financially for the town? Because we, frankly, are in no position to take a loss. Uh, and again, we're not trying to make money off of it. Uh, the goal would be if we did decide to do something, we would just, the goal would be for us to break even. But there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle that, quite frankly, we either don't have uh, because, again, things like the governor's orders um, or we're trying to figure out. So our goal is to hopefully have a decision for both by the middle of the month, uh, May 15th, which, again, uh, is when the New York on pause order is set to be lifted. My personal expectation, not fact, personal opinion, personal expectation. Uh, I believe that that's going to be extended for Westchester County. Uh, we saw that with his, with Governor Cuomo and, and his um, elective surgeries. Uh, elective surgeries are going to be allowed in certain parts of the state, um, but Westchester was left out. And I think downstate counties, Westchester, New York City, Suffolk and Nassau are going to be on a, a, I think Rockland and Orange may have even been included in that. I think we're going to be put on a separate timetable uh, for the New York on pause order to be lifted, at least if you're reading between the lines and you're trying to read the tea leaves, that's what they, that's what they're, that's what they're saying. Oh. Um, uh, but I think we need to be prepared either way. We will be prepared either way, but there are logistical questions and financial questions pertaining to camps and pools that we still need to answer, assuming we are even able to have them this summer. And you have a lot of company with that because we had uh, the chamber had a, um, um, a, a virtual meeting, Zoom meeting with Ron Fuchs, and mm -hmm. he's like a college guy, right? Yeah. He's the college guy, and um, you know he was in his presentation. He addressed what is going to happen in these colleges, you know, come September, if assuming it's open, assuming it's assuming open. they're open, and and there's just, it's just such a you know cataclysmic effect because. They're not going to be prepared. Students may not, may decide to take the year off or right. take a semester off, and it just snowballs. I, you know? yeah. it's, it's, it's a very challenging situation. I, yeah. Without a doubt, in, in our pools and camps, there's no easy answer, to say the least. Supervisor Slater, how can I help you? Hey, Dick. Mm hmm So the Yorktown News is a is a is a it's not a town it's not a town newspaper. No, that's a that's a private uh yeah, that's a private organization. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You got it. No problem. Bye bye. Thanks. So as a reminder, Nick wanted to provide a reminder that, again, uh, if you have just generic questions, health care questions, do not call 911. We need to make sure that 911 uh, stays uh, available for, for emergencies. Um, he also reminded folks about the antibody testing that is being offered. Uh, I know Caremount is offering antibody testing as well as AFC yes. Urgent Care. Yeah. Um, both, I think, are I, – those are the two that I saw. I don't know right. if there's anything I, else. I think Pulse MD, if you're like over by. That's on the other side right. of Lexington. That's in Cortland, yeah, in Mohegan Cor Lake. Yeah, Cortland. I think they might even have one in yep. the So May there is antibody there. testing as part of our, uh, of the town's efforts uh, to again be ready when we get further direction from the state. Uh, we're going to be providing antibody testing for town employees. Uh, we expect that to be happening at some point either this week or next week. Um, and just like we were saying about the schools. We're going to have to retrofit offices in the town of Yorktown, and these are things, these are things that are already happening. We're already ordering plexiglass to install at the town clerk window, at the tax receiver's window, you know, over at R&R, &R, um, uh, you know, at all of our different departments where the public interacts because it doesn't just protect the public, but it protects our employees. Um, and so, so those are all things that, you know, we, we don't know for sure where this is all going, but we have a responsibility to take those actions. Yeah, better and to be prepared. Exactly. And so, again, when it comes, you know, so those are, those again, you know, when we talked about pools, do you, do you have concession stands? Well, you know, again, a lot of this, a lot of this is predicated off of, and I, and I wanted to get back to this. I want to make sure folks at home understand this is local government, right? And so uh, we really are at the mercy of other decision makers. 
whether it's at the county or the state level, really the state level, the county has been tremendous. And I really want to, again, as always, thank County Executive Latimer. Um, he's been a great, great partner, as well as uh, our county legislators, Badak Ashi and Colin Smith. Uh, they've been really giving us the latitude as municipalities to make choices for ourselves. So I really want to thank them for that. But again, local government, and, and I do have some experience in this from working in the state, local government is really about, uh, uh, for, for the big ticket items, it's implementation. This is where the rubber meets the road. And so uh, a lot of these things are being handed to us by the governor through his executive orders to implement. Whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't, whether I agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. It just simply doesn't matter because that is our responsibility to implement the, the directives that are being given to us. Uh, and right now, pools are closed as part of his executive order. Uh, we are waiting to hear, and, we've, and I brought this up uh, uh, last week, and I know that uh, the county executive was going to communicate this with the governor's office as well, because other supervisors raised it as well as camps. We're all waiting to see what we're doing with camps. Um, and even here in Yorktown, you know, we have FDR Park. FDR Park is, I think, the largest uh, pool of any state park. So is this, are, we gonna be, are they going to be opening that pool? That pool is also slated for a major facelift this summer. So it's, I don't even believe, and, and I know that uh, former supervisor Linda Cooper uh, who I spoke with yesterday because she plays a role in this, um, had some opinions on the matter. But, you know, it's about working together and understanding what everyone's doing. Um, and one of my concerns, quite frankly, it's less about, it's, 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 more, it's more about coordination. And, and so when we see Putnam County begin to open before Westchester County, what impact does that have on Yorktown? And, and those are all questions that we need answers to, and, and, uh, and we intend to, have those conversations with the with the necessary parties, but those are important things that we need to figure out because folks over you know on the north side of town, you're you're two minutes from Putnam County, right? And so if Putnam County is going to be on a different timeline than the rest of us. How does that impact uh, our businesses? How does that impact you know residents not just here in Yorktown, but if people from Yorktown are traveling across into Mayapac, what is it? What does that sure. mean for Mayapac? It it's def defeats a purpose. Really, in, in a really. sense, it does. In a sense, it does. So, other, other questions we might yeah. have. So, so we were talking about, can you share how many new COVID cases are in Yorktown, rate of infection increase or decrease? And then a separate question came in, so it's a two for one here. Uh, okay. The question was, if someone tests positive for the antibody, are they being added to the COVID That's number? a great question. Uh, right now, no. This is just straight COVID test positives. And this is the cumulative number. So this has been, again, we've been, the governor said today, 62 days. So this goes back and since we started the testing. Uh, and right now, the last number I received is 454. And if you look at the last week, that number, because we were averaging somewhere, you know, depend, you know, really about 20 a day at one point, that number's really declined to the point where, where I think last week we were only bringing in about anywhere, no more than five a day. So we've really, we've really done a great job reducing that number, even though we've had increased testing. Uh, but that's a great point about the antibody. Um, that was Carol, by the way. Oh, Carol, great question. Uh, the <laughs> short answer is no, it's not being added, but I, something that we'll definitely raise uh, as something that we should maybe include. But I can say, I can say with, with great certainty that the uh, the rate has definitely dropped, our um, the rate has definitely dropped, and our success with social distancing and and the, and the parameters we put forth, they've worked, they've they've clearly clearly worked. Well, one one thing I wanted to bring up with with the social distancing and all the policies, you know, it is so it, it's look, it's become almost a way of life to go out with your mask and go out with your gloves. Uh, yesterday, I had to run to Lowe's to get some uh, some stuff for uh, you know for safety of our dogs to do some fencing, and um, we we had um, uh, we pulled into the Lowe's lot, and Cal was like, "Oh my God, Yorktown could pay its 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 entire annual wages if they, if someone just was here giving out tickets." Uh, because because of the the amount of gloves and masks on the ground. Now, of course, we can't always get out there and say, "Hey, you know, we're going to put a police officer there." But ha you know, if you care so much about the health of people, uh, why would you throw those gloves on the ground where one of these workers are going to have to pick it up? Pick it up. You know, not only pick it up. The law enforcement 
you know, whoever's giving you the ticket now has to interact with you when the yeah. interaction shouldn't even be. But right. Take it, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's that too. But, but take it one more step. And, and, and I was reminded of this this past week with all the rain we had. What happens to all the stuff in the street once you get all the rain? Mm -hmm. All that stuff's winding up in our water. We, we have an incoming call from Assemblyman Kevin Byrne. Oh, I know that guy. You know that guy? Good, good, good. Should I put you on speaker, sir? You know where... where I didn't. I, I, I figured you would hear us uh, talking. You know, we're in the Q&A right now. Myself and Matt. Oh, I thought you were calling because you were on Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, well, why don't you say hello anyway? I don't think... Well, hello. Yeah. All right. Hey. That's uh, Assemblyman Kevin Byrne. Oh, you're Kevin in the background. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Assemblyman Kevin Byrne. How, how, uh, Kevin, uh, what's happening on the state level with the Assembly? Oh, oh man, we're... we're it's uh, it's a bit frustrating because there's a lot of uncertainty as far as Facebook's are we going to go back to session to vote? There's still a lot uh, can you turn up the volume? left to be done, and uh, we are Tommy? Uh, for starters, the budget got done. But get the volume up. Many so of our local bills. There's a local bill that we're working on with Senator Harkum uh, regarding uh, the for advertisements on parks that we talked about um, with the supervisor. That's something that we still want to try to get through if there's time. But certainly we want to make sure legislators across the state are safe, too. So there's a little bit of a question mark there. But we also have the ability to vote virtually. We updated the rules in the state legislature so we could vote remotely uh, through Zoom or some other technology. Um, but the big thing is, you know, we want to find out what happens on May 15th. You know, the governor uh, has the ability uh, to make some regional changes, which I'm glad... He's uh, made, he's revisited his initial strategy of doing one statewide strategy to uh, reopening uh, our economy and society to doing more of a regional approach, which I think does make more sense. Uh, we're, we have a great big diverse state. So that's the big thing is May 15th is what we're going to leave. We'll be learning a lot more. We need to make sure that any changes he makes don't uh, hurt our local governments because he does have the authority to, to cut spending based on the revenues we uh, we see in the state, and that's certainly we're going to be watching clo watching closely because that affects property taxpayers too. All right. Well, great, Kevin. We're going to go back and finish the Q&A because we had some questions built up. Uh, you thank, got it. Thank you for checking in. and uh, Always. Thank, oh. thank you for fighting for the town of Yorktown. Uh, you got it, my friend. Hey, be well. Always good to check in, and anything I can do to help, you know, I'm just a phone call away. Uh, Thanks, Kev. I, we'll All call right. you with a list of things you could do for our town, buddy. <laughs> you got it, Councilman. All right, take care. Be well. Take care, Mike. So, so real quick, I think we have just a few more questions, and then we're going to wrap this up. But uh, I saw one about uh, uh, how many have resolved and what's the hospital rate. We aren't provided those numbers uh, for the town of Yorktown. That's uh, just some, that's just those are just not data points that are given uh, by the county Department of Health, which receives their data from the state Department of Health. So the number that we had, uh, again, 454 is the cumulative uh, number of everyone, of people who've been tested positive for COVID-19 since tested started, uh, I believe, right at the end of March. Other questions on Facebook? And then we'll wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you're hiking trails and touch rocks and trees, can the virus be passed from hiker to hiker and should hikers wear gloves? I don't. Th um, I haven't seen anything that that proves that's the case, and uh, everything that I've seen, I haven't seen uh, encouragement for hikers to wear gloves. It's mostly the the the, uh, the masks and the facial coverings, um, but I don't believe the surface uh, infection when you're hiking is something to be uh, necessarily concerned about. Uh, has travel camp already been canceled? Travel camp was canceled. And the reason travel camp was canceled was because we simply couldn't guarantee the health and safety of kids to the places that they're going. Nor could we guarantee that the places that they were scheduled to go to, such as Playland, is going to even be open. And so we decided with uh, the Parks and Rec uh, superintendent to cancel travel camps. Anyone who signed up for travel camps will be fully reimbursed. And there was a question about the organic recyc recycling yard that was answered. Uh, open Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to, to 2.45 p.m. Yep, but if I can just urge folks, because uh, Highway Superintendent Paganelli uh, has done, a, and, and Kim Gage uh, has done a great, great job with this. Um, but please, when you're going to the yard, my wife tries to send me every day almost, 
<laughs> please make sure that you're still practicing social distancing and wearing a mask if you cannot. And also, it is not a playground it's for not kids. a playground for kids. So when we hear that we have kids using uh, some of the piles as slides, uh, it makes us rethink the yard and whether or not we should keep it open. Uh, it's been a great asset for this town. It continues to be a great asset for this town. Uh, but we have to be, again, socially responsible, sprinkled on a little with common sense. So if you can help us keep it open, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. It's a great service for the town. And again, hats off to the Highway Department, Highway Superintendent Paganelli uh, and Kim Anglis Gage for, for their great work in making this available for the town. But I think we're averaging about 200 a day at the, at the, uh, at the hill. And uh, I think yesterday it may have been double, but I don't quote me on that because I haven't heard that yet from Highway Superintendent Paganelli. But it's getting a lot of use. Uh, I'll be there to fill in the holes Olivia's dug in my yard. So there you go. Perfect. <laughs> to get some soil. And a uh, qu question that uh, question that that came up about the trees and the rocks. An interesting point. Our fire commissioner uh, Marty McGannon made. Uh, ultraviolet kills virus. So yes, it does. So that that may be. I'll tell uh, you, go uh, just touching on that. Um, I just had a conversation with Dr. Zook from the Tooth Mover, and um, he actually has. Uh, ultra, he had it installed years ago. He has ultraviolet light in his ventilation me. system. Supervisor Slater, how can so I as the air circulates, it passes through his ventilation system, and it has ultraviolet light naturally. And he said he put that in because sure. he had that had respiratory issues or something. But right. so that's a great feature. To, you know, so when yep. he opens up, it's it, I think it'll be a pretty big selling point for him. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, you know, uh, also. Uh, uh, Marty uh, McGann and also commented about the fact when you're going into the recycling yard, mm -hmm. the speed limit is five miles per hour there. There are there's a, it's a very active work site yep. over there. Not only is the the uh, the the uh, the hill there, but we also have sewer down in that area as well. So there are people going back and forth. Please, exactly. please, for the safety of everyone, adhere to that right. five mile per and hour speed limit. And, and quite frankly, that's why the track remains closed. And, I, and I'll address that right now, uh, because that's exactly why uh, our, our highway superintendent, myself, and, and in con consultation with uh, the county's uh, health commissioner, uh, decided that closing the track was was the best decision for public health and safety. Well, I'm hoping May 15th we start to see uh, a turnaround. I mean, uh, yep. You know, the, you, there has to be compassion on both sides of the spectrum. and uh, I understand. You know, a lot of these businesses are just pretty much their whole livelihoods in them. I understand. So, I, I mean, understand. that's a concern. Yep, no problem. But, I'm happy to address it. Well, I think, I think the most important Stay well. thing Thank you. Bye -bye. is as we get back to, to normal, it's, it's a step. It's a ladder. And as we climbed up the ladder with everything we're doing, we come down gradually. Just because, you know, things start to open up, we can't go from, hey, you know what, mass social distancing, gloves, to, hey, now it doesn't matter. Let's, you know, hang out. No, that's, and, you're absolutely right about that. You, know, you still have to maintain. Right. And, is yeah. safe social distancing still you know, the masks, the, you know, as, as things open up. You know, it's an interesting point. Someone said that, well, you know, supermarkets can operate. You know, what, what creates, you know, what, since it's created that, like that, where, why can't retail? And it's, you know, the, the fear I don't think is how we're going to operate in it. It's just the fear that, and, and I think Matt's going to speak about the fact that some people just don't, adhere to anything and don't care about it. So I, I sort of heard your conversation. Sure. So I just had a gentleman call about the Yorktown, uh, about the track uh, right here in Yorktown Heights uh, around uh, Veterans Memorial Field. Uh, he had a great point. I mean, he, uh, he lives right around there. And he said that he saw a high volume of people today without their masks on. And if he chose to go down to the track, which I want to be very clear, is closed for public use, uh, because for this very reason, if he was down at the track and somebody else was there who was not following the protocols, he would be at risk. He would be at risk. And let's be very clear, that risk could lead to death. So when the reason we keep the track closed, and, and I said it to him on the phone, in consultation with our parks director, as well as with the, uh, I had a conversation with the uh, Commissioner of Health for Westchester County, we simply cannot ensure that the people who would utilize the track would follow these protocols. 
There's no way to enforce it and ensure it. And I'd rather close the track and save someone's life like this gentleman than, than not, than allow people to utilize it who aren't going to follow the parameters that are being put forth. And so, uh, again, all of our active parks remain closed. I want to be very clear about that. They remain closed. That includes Granite Knolls, Legacy Field. That includes the track at uh, Veterans Memorial Field. That includes our basketball courts and playgrounds. The yellow tape is still up. That also, by the way, uh, folks, that includes the skate park. And I know that, uh, and, and parents, I'm sorry if you can help me out, if your kids utilize it, the, the, yellow, the, the yellow tape's there for a reason. It's not for them to, to uh, practice uh, limbo or take it down, uh, even though I know they like jump to. Over with the or skateboard. utilize it as a jump. It's not. Um, it's there to tell them, and also you, to please not use the park. It is closed. It's closed for their safety. Uh, and I want to reemphasize that, their safety. Our passive parks remain open. We went over this several times again today. If you're going to go utilize our parks, passive, including the passive parks, face masks, social distancing, social responsibility. Those are the three things we ask. Yeah, I think, I think part of the issue is, is, is people have interpreted the whole mask order as if you're inside, you need a mask, and if you're outside, you just don't. And, and that's not the case either way. It's, it's you, you need a mask if you can't maintain your social distancing. Right. So if you're outside and you cannot do that, then you need a mask. That's it. I mean, it's just the bottom line. Sunday, I hope everyone had a great weekend. It was beautiful out there. Closing remarks, uh, Councilman Lachterman. Uh, well, uh, one, one other thing about the waste plant, as we were talking about while you were on the phone before, the bike trail goes through there also, another point. Uh, I was just sent something, actually, it was kind of interesting. Charles Gasparino uh, grew up in Yorktown, mm -hmm. actually right, right around the corner from my wife. And uh, he, he put how he misses, you know, coming up and being able to exercise at the track. I used to always see him on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Uh, working out, and you know, the the point he made is the, the one of the worst things for him about the pandemic, uh, other than the loss of life, is is knowing that that you know the little things in life are, have been so affected, and you know he 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 said something which I found very true: learn to appreciate him, mm. uh, you know, and he will. He said he'll appreciate him a lot more. So uh, you're right, Charles. Uh, we should all appreciate the little things in life as we do not know when life will change. Absolutely. Sergio, cl yeah. closing remarks? So I'm excited for May 15th, um, you know, and, and I encourage everybody to be small business advocates for our town and to shop local. And um, just remember, it's going to be a slow reopening, and we still need everybody to be socially responsible. And, and, and if we could do that, I think that'll expedite the opening of our town, our businesses, our restaurants, you know, but as we move forward, it's, it's, it's temporary. It's going to be for a little while, um, but you're still going to need to socially distant, even if things are open, just like uh, Ms. our supervisor indicated. Uh, and if we could all do this together and work together on it uh, and be respectful of one another and compassionate of one another, I think it'll expedite the process and we, we'll be back before you know it. All right. Thank you. So I just want to uh, end with a couple of last-minute reminders. Uh, we announced this on Friday. Memorial Day Parade has been canceled for the town of Yorktown. And that was a decision made uh, with the VFW commander. Uh, and I just got received an email from the, from the Legion as well. Uh, with, this is what they were expecting. Uh, but we're going to work on some sort of ceremony or recognition that uh, is, is permissible. Uh, lastly, uh, also the Lions Concert Series, and, and Councilman, I don't know if you spoke about this or not, but the I Lions Concert Series, they're postponing their, or they've, they're Canceled. canceling their June and July concerts. Right. And we are looking at the last four, which are supposed to all occur in August. We'll see uh, where we're at. And see where the guidance is. We'll see is. where we're at. So June and July Lions Concerts have been canceled. Uh, the Planning Board will be meeting tomorrow via uh, video conference. Town, excuse me, the planning board is meeting on Monday uh, via video conference. Town board is meeting on Tuesday via video conference. And the zoning board is scheduled to meet May 28th uh, via video conference. And I just want to end, it was funny, I was, I was on a run this morning. Uh, 
it's great. My daughter actually likes the jogging stroller. My son couldn't stand it. Uh, so now I get to enjoy these runs with my daughter in the jogging stroller. And uh, it was funny because I passed, uh, I passed uh, actually some neighbors who were walking around. And they were all, they were all talking and reminiscing about the same thing. And it, and it really hit home for me. As people know, I grew up in this town. Um, and I, the block I grew up on uh, had about 20 kids, all about the same age, all about my age. And it was all about pickup basketball and roller hockey in the street and just hiking in the backyards. And, and it, was, it was great. It was just it's what I love about this community. It was a great place to, to live and grow up. And I think everyone can admit to the fact, for a number of reasons, technology or whatever, uh, we've grown away from that. We've grown away from that sense of a, of a neighborhood. And so I think it's something, you know, I, I always try to find the good. Always try to find the good. It's something my mom taught me. And if you're trying to, one of the, one of the things that I've found, it's a great opportunity to rediscover not just your neighborhood, but your neighbor's. When people are out on their front lawns, and I've, I've driven past other communities, and it, it, they're not having a block party, but you see like four families on four front, front lawns. And, and there is something special about that. And that's one of the things that growing up here, I frankly, I got to, I got to experience. And it's something I hope we don't lose, is, is the meaningfulness of our neighbor's and having these incredible neighborhoods to raise our families in and, and live in. And so as we go into this week, just a reminder to stay focused, stay focused on social responsibility, stay focused on making the right choices, again, not just for yourself, but for those neighbors, for the people that you live with and around. It really is for many of them, and we, we, we have lost... Uh, we just announced today again with uh, building inspector Landy, we are losing people because of COVID-19. And so that should be the motivating factor when you're making these choices is to save someone's life because it's just a simple decision that could do it. And with that, again, as always, uh, we will continue to provide accurate and valid information as we receive it. Uh, again, we'll be back Tuesday with our town board meeting. And until then, stay safe. Stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much.